Today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be talking about my weekly rotation fragrances. These are the fragrances that I wore this week. It is now Sunday when I'm recording this. So I just want to talk about these. They definitely deserve to be highlighted as well. I mean, I'm not being funny. And I'm not saying this to be snobby or anything like that. I don't tend to wear fragrances that smell bad. So to me, these are great smelling fragrances. If you want to find out about what I wore, stay tuned. What is good YouTube? Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel. That is right, come in take a seat, chill out. I'm going to talk about the fragrances that I wore this week. Like I said in the intro, to me, these are great fragrances. You can't go wrong with any of these. And I love highlighting fragrances as well. I just love talking about fragrances in general. But before I get going, if you do enjoy my content, hit that subscribe button. It is completely free. And always press the bell because it will notify you when I drop a review at a later date. Right. Monday. I wore Full Moon Over the Desert from the House of Zara. It is a designer house. They do clothes, bags, shoes, jewellery. They do everything. And they do fragrances. And this one, I believe it was £24, £25 for 100 mil. Let me tell you something. If you enjoy leather in your fragrances... I think you're going to enjoy this fragrance. It's not overly complex. Everything kind of happens all at once or over a short period of time. But we'll get into it. Atomizer, not that bad. This is other perfume concentration. That is good. In the air. I think this smells better in the air than what it does up close on skin. You've got leather, iris, caramel, woodsy notes, sand, evernal, pink pepper and bergamot. Now straight out the gate, you get the leather. You get sweetness, you get the caramel. Everything comes across um, a little bit smoky. So the caramel comes across smelling a little bit burnt. I think that's due to the leather creating that smoky quality plus that leathery aroma that you get. There is a very light touch of bergamot up top in this fragrance. And I mean, it's very light. It kind of takes the edge off of that leather. With all this, it's powdery, and that is coming from the iris. As it starts to settle, literally after a couple of minutes, once that opening's calmed down, then you do get a woodsy tone that does come through in this fragrance. And the more this dries, the leather does settle down, the bergamot dissipates, you do get a soft bit of spice from that pink pepper, the iris in Full Moon Over the Desert doesn't go lipsticky. You don't really get that cosmetic bag aroma from the iris here. It's powdery up top, but the longer this sits, that iris sort of smooths out the mid. It adds a little bit of a creamy quality into the fragrance. And the way that is blended in with the leather and the woods, I think it smells great. To me, this is a great inexpensive fragrance. It's four to five hours longevity. Sometimes I had three and a half hours out of it. Sometimes I've had four hours. There's only once or twice really that I've had five hours out of it. So it's below moderate in longevity. The projection's good for the first half hour to 45 minutes. Medium to strong, I would say. And then it rains in after that quite quickly. But for what you pay, you can overspray this fragrance. Of course, it lasts longer on garments like your jumper, your shirt, your T-shirt. To me, this is a little bit more of a cooler weather fragrance. I think this would be great on a date night. I really do. Because of that powdery side and the leather, at first it comes across a little bit dark and smoky. But as that calms down and the fragrance turns creamy, everything goes buttery and smooth. Yeah, I think this is a solid fragrance. Monday I wore this. It was a little bit cooler and I haven't reached for it in a little while. 
that is full moon over the desert, 25 pounds for 100 mil. I don't care about the longevity, it smells that good. Tuesday, I was feeling a little bit of sandalwood and I've got a few sandalwood based fragrances and to be honest with you, I like and love most of the sandalwood fragrances that I do own. And I don't reach for this that much. If you're, I'm going to say this straight away. If you're in the market for a sandalwood based fragrance that smells of high quality, you want to try Indian sandalwood from Dunhill. This thing is a beauty of a fragrance. Talk about smooth. Let me just show you. This is 100 ml at the perfume concentration. Oh man, the way this opens up and the way this sits on your skin. You've got carrot, bergamot, orris, moss, sandalwood, patchouli and cypriol oil. Simple note breakdown, not a complex fragrance. To be honest with you, Indian sandalwood is a linear fragrance. There's a little few chops and changes, but nothing dramatic, nothing that's really going to stand out. This opens up semi-sweet, it opens up woodsy, it opens up vegetal, a little bit earthy. That vegetal quality and that earthy side of this fragrance is coming from the carrot. Now, it doesn't smell like carrot. It just adds an earthy quality and, like I say, a little bit of a vegetal touch. But with this, you have the sandalwood. And the sandalwood here, at first, it's a little bit dusty and musky. As this settles in, the fragrance goes buttery and creamy and smooth. That cypriol oil and the moss, they carry that earthy quality through the fragrance. But this is not an overly earthy fragrance. That earthy or the earthy side of this fragrance always tetters and lingers in the background. It never screams, it's never too much in your face. You can tell that it's there, but that's as far as it goes. In the air, it's quite, sometimes I don't pick up that earthy side in the air, but when I smell my skin, I definitely get that earthy quality from this fragrance. And with all this going on, the patchouli. Now, the patchouli to me is what darkens this fragrance a little bit, because at first, it does open up, I would say, slightly bright. Very woodsy, dusty, powdery, semi-sweet. But in the background, there's always a little bit of this dark side to this fragrance. And the more it settles, the more it tends to darken up a little bit. And that is the patchouli. The patchouli here is beefing up the woodsy side of things. It's helping put a little bit of sweetness into the fragrance. Plus, it darkens it up. Linear fragrance. But man, this thing smells rich. It really does. If you look on discounters for 100 ml of this stuff, you can find it anywhere between 55 and 70 pounds for 100 ml. If you like sandalwood fragrances, if you enjoy or love sandalwood fragrances and you haven't tried Indian sandalwood from Dunhill, I urge you to get yourself a sample and just see what you think about it. You will see how smooth this fragrance is. But anyway, Tuesday, I had that sandalwood feeling. And Dunhill is what I reached for. Wednesday, the old currant bun come out and showed its face. And if you lot don't know what currant bun is, it's slang for sun. The old currant bun, the sun. It showed its face on Wednesday. It wasn't warm because there was a bit of a chill in the air, but it was sunny. And I was like, why not reach for Jean-Paul Gaultier's Paradise Garden? I just had to pull it out. I'm not going to go too in-depth on this. I've recently done an update review on this fragrance. I personally love the way this fragrance smells. Someone commented on my update review and said that they got it in and I was a bit disappointed because it reminded them of an Alpine air freshener, I believe they said. I don't get that at all. And if there is an air freshener that smells like this, I want that air freshener. Right, let me just spray it. Oh man, straight away it's good. It really is. You've got coconut water, tonka bean, green fig, sandalwood, ginger and mint. Now, 
This opens up fruity, it opens up green, it opens up aquatic. It's got a little bit of a salty quality to the fragrance. Very fresh up top. It is bright and it is fruity. Now, as it starts to settle in, things turn creamy, the fig calms down, the coconut tends to amp up a little bit. Woods come through, you get the sandalwood. Not only is it helping out on the creamy side of things, it does come across a little bit dusty on my skin as well. It's weird. It seems that quite a few sandalwood fragrances that have a prominent note of sandalwood, like this and Indian sandalwood, they tend to turn creamy on my skin, but they also give off a little bit of a dusty effect as well. And that is what I get with this. It does have soft, musky edges. The more this settles, the green does calm down a little bit. The fig fades out. Like I say, the coconut amps up. The woods come through. It is a playful, fun fragrance. It really is. This gives me pool party vibes. Where you're with a bunch of friends, it's hot. You're having a few pina coladas or sexies on the beach. Cocktails. Don't get too carried away. And you're just having a few drinks, getting a little bit tipsy and merry, and you're smelling of this. It's an attractive fragrance. But yeah, anyway, I rocked Paradise Garden on Wednesday. Solid fragrance. I think it's a great release for 2024. I really do. Thursday, I was looking at one of my cabinets and I was like, Blue de Chanel every day, the EDP stares me in the face. I look at it and I think, no, not today. No, not today. No, not today. Well, Thursday, I wore Blue de Chanel at the Parfum. I have 150 ml of this juice, and that is not me bragging or boasting, but I have a lot of juice here, and I don't know how long it's going to take me to get through this bottle, but let me just spray it. There is no doubt about it that this does smell great. Yes, it's been hyped so bad but because i did wear it thursday i had to put it in the review this is a timeless dna i believe that other perfume either come out in 2015 maybe 2014 somewhere around that time and it's 2024 so it's been around for nine or ten years there is no way that you would smell this and think yeah that smells dated in 10 years to come this will smell great. It is timeless. There is a ton of notes in this fragrance. You've got bergamot, lemon, grapefruit, vetiver, pink pepper, grapefruit again, cedarwood, labdan and pepper, mint, nutmeg, ginger, jasmine, frankincense, sandalwood and amberwood. Now, it does open up very fresh. It opens up lively, citrusy. It has a little bit of a bite to it. The grapefruit and the lemon really do stand out up top. With this, you've got some fresh spice. Now, after a couple of minutes, once that opening calms down and the fragrance starts to settle on your skin, a little bit of darkness and depth come through. And what I mean by that is depth is the frankincense, the labdanum, the amberwood. All these notes create this solid foundation for this fragrance. The citrus tones down a little bit. This smooth frankincense accord comes through and it is very smooth. And it's just enough for you to notice that it's there. It's not jumping out at you. It's just saying hello, giving you a wink. With this, you get a woodsy undertone. The spice calms down. Now... This fragrance to me, or on my skin, it always keeps a little bit of that citrus. Even in a dry down, I can tell that there is citrus in this fragrance. And to me, I think the ginger in the base boosts the citrus a little bit. That is what I personally think. Because the way the ginger comes across in this, it doesn't smell like citrus, but I think the way it reacts with the citruses toning down, it sort of gives them a spark of life a little bit. That's what I think. It is a great fragrance. It has a level of sophistication to it. The opening is a little bit playful and youthful, I would say. I'm not saying juvenile, I'm just saying youthful. But then the more this dries down, the seriouser it turns because of all the darker notes that are in this fragrance. And to me, 
that is when this fragrance really comes across as sophisticated, well-groomed, well-dressed, smart. This fragrance is very versatile. Definitely. You can wear this dress down. You can wear it dressed up. I won't wear this to the gym. I think it's too good for a gym fragrance. A couple of sprays of this if you dress smart and you work in an office. Definitely. If you're going out for drinks with your other half or with the pals, you can wear this fragrance. Even if you're going on a dinner date. Because it's clean, smart and sophisticated, you can pull it off. But anyway, that is Blue de Chanel other perfume and this thing is a fingerprint magnet i think that this fragrance that i'm going to talk about now is one of the most slept on fragrances from mansara and i just need to remind you lot quickly that mansara is a niche house their sister or brother house so to speak is montau they are owned by one person, and I believe his name is Pierre Montel, if I'm saying that correctly. This is Coom Cat Wood. This, my friends, is masculine, is fresh, is versatile. This is an all year round fragrance. If you like Terre de Mez, the EDT version, this is, I would say, a niche version of that. They're opening, or this fragrance does remind me of Terre de Mez, but there's something different. There's a little bit more sweetness in this. There's a little bit more warmth to the fragrance. And this is Mansara's old style bottle where you have to screw the lid off. The new ones are magnetic caps with pressurized atomizers. These are the old atomizers, which give out a little bit of juice. But man, this is good. You've got grapefruit, bergamot, spices, patchouli leaves, floral notes, amber, vetiver, white musk and woodsy notes. Straight away you get the grapefruit, you get the bergamot. So it's citrusy, it's fresh, it's lively, it's fresh spicy. And the spice here is quite strong at first. Like for the first couple of minutes the spices really do hit your nose. But with this you notice the vetiver straight away. Now the vetiver in Coom Cat Wood is earthy i would say it's a little bit damp and soily the more this settles down the citruses sort of take a back seat the woodsy side of coon cat wood amps up now the patchouli leaves in this fragrance do give this a dry quality but the patchouli leaves mixed in with the floral notes also gives this a green tone in the mid through to the base in the fragrance and the more this settles, it's one of them. The woodsier it goes. The patchouli here and the amber as well. It's clever how they work these fragrances. The amber adds a touch of darkness into the fragrance, plus pushes some sweetness in. You've got the patchouli working with the amber, but then you've got the patchouli leaves working with the floral notes, which creates this green tone in the fragrance. It's very well done. It is very similar to Terre de Mez. But it's just, there's a little twang in, there's a little twang in here that sets it apart from that fragrance. And you have to try it to know what I'm talking about. It's quite hard to explain. It's Terre de Mez, but in a niche version, basically. But anyway, that is Coon Cat Wood. And this lasts seven to eight hours, gym, office, drinks, lounging, running chores, Anywhere you want to wear a fragrance, you can rock Coom Cat Wood. You really can. And it's masculine. It's for men. Yesterday, meaning Saturday, the sun was out. The wind was down a little bit. So you got a little bit of warmth from the sun. Still had to wear a coat, but it was nice with the heat on your face. And the fresher fragrances are starting to come out. And this is a full-on summer fragrance. But I think it's great for spring and I think it's great all year round. Because this can be a pick-me-up on the miserable days when it's doom and gloom outside. This is Loewe's Paula Ibiza. What a great fragrance this is. As soon as I smelt this fragrance, it was love at first sniff. But you have to enjoy green fragrances to appreciate this. There's no escaping it. 
you have to enjoy a fragrance that comes across green and a little bit sharp. There's the lid. A funky looking bottle with the colours. This is EDT concentration. And let me tell you something. This I get eight plus hours with. It opens up strong. We're going to get into it. You've got galbanum, coconut, mandarin, orange. You've got driftwood, frangipani, narcissus, amber grease, patchouli and vanilla. So everything opens up tropical. It opens up very green. That galbanum cuts through this fragrance like a knife through butter. At first, it's piercing. But as it settles, that piercing or that sharp edge dissipates. But that green tone, that green aroma from that galbanum sticks with this fragrance. But with this, you've got the coconut, you've got the florals. So the coconut mixed in with the narcissist and the frangipani create this tropical aroma in the fragrance. The driftwood comes across as a little bit salty. It's like you're standing on a beach and the wind is bringing in the smell of the ocean. You know, you get that salty smell that's in the air. And imagine that and you're standing next to brush or quite a lot of vegetation and the wind is whipping around the vegetation and that wind is mixing in with the sea air wind and you're getting the smell of the green brush, the saltiness from the sea. That is what you get with this fragrance, but it has a tropical side to it as well. This to me is earthy, woodsy, a little bit sweet and green, whereas, whereas Jean-Paul Gaultier's Paradise Garden is more of a fruity sweetness or is more of a fruity tropical fragrance, whereas this is more of a woodsy green tropical fragrance. You still get the coconut, but the coconut is not too in your face. You can tell it's there, but it's not screaming at you. This is straight up unisex but i do think it leans a little bit masculine because of that green quality and because of a woodsy undertone that it does have but anyway i love this fragrance and if you want to pick me up for the cooler days this will do it for you it is strong as well this stuff lingers this stuff lingers on clothes for days and you can pick this up for a very good price i think you can pick it up for about 80 to 100 pound for 100 mil it is worth that. If they haven't reformulated it and it's still as strong as this, it is worth that money all day long. Anyway, I don't know why I keep putting the bottles down. It is Loewe's Paula Ibiza. EDT. Solid fragrance. And now my scent of the day today, it is Sunday today, is a fragrance from the house of Aaron Terrence Shoes. And it is called Oud. This is a 10 ml. This is extract to perfum. With the name of Oud, you would think that this fragrance is just a straight up Oud bomb. Funky, animalic, barnyardy, maybe a little bit fecal. Well, you would be wrong. There is more to it than that. And this fragrance is not fecal. We're going to get into it. You've got rose, sweet orange, date, raspberry, amber. Thai Oud, Burmese Oud, Benzoin, Patchouli, Sandalwood, Vanilla, Ethical Ambergris. So straight away, this opens up with a sweet, jammy rose. And I think the reason why the rose is coming across as jammy is because you've got this fruity quality in the fragrance as well, coming from the raspberry, coming from the date. To me and to my nose and on my skin, that raspberry does push up top alongside that rose, and that is what's creating this jammy effect. With this, you've got the oud. Now, I do get a light animatic touch with oud, but the more this settles, it kind of goes through stages. Like the oud, one minute will come across a little bit smoky, then the fragrance will have a nice bit, or always has a nice bit of sweetness to it. I think the Thai Oud is pushing in sweetness, smoothing the fragrance out a little bit and obviously putting in a woodsy undertone. And I think the Burmese Oud is what's creating this animatic touch plus the smoky side of things. And the more this sits, it starts to get resinous, a little bit balsamic, ambery touches. The sweetness calms down. 
the fruity side of this fragrance starts slowly making its way into the back of the fragrance then the oud becomes more present but by this stage the oud has calmed down the smoky side of this has calmed down the animalic side has dissipated the ethical amber grease here to me i think it structures the fragrance i think it pushes the fragrance a little bit more and i think it just helps beef up the oudy side of things in oud from aaron terence hughes this is long lasting you're going to get eight plus hours with this fragrance there i've got i've got a lot of his 10 mls and i only own a couple of his 50 mls and there is fragrances like i would love to get a 50 ml of this i would love to get a 50 ml of hard candy elixir i wish that i could get 50 ml of forbidden and I do want to get 50 mils of these fragrances, but because all these new fragrances are coming out, one week I think to myself, right, next week I'm going to get one of Aaron Terence Hughes fragrances in a 50 mil form, and then boom, there's a new release coming out. And I'm like, if I was loaded, I would be able to buy everything under the sun. But I need to think to myself, right, that can wait. I need to get that one. It's just how I work things out. But anyway, that is Oud from the House of Aaron Terence Shoes. It is a beautiful fragrance. It is rich. It is complex. It has layers. It has depth. It does have a little bit of a sophisticated side to it, especially in a dry down when it sits resinous and balsamic. Yeah, it's a great fragrance. Right, ladies and gentlemen, that is my weekly rotation review. If I piped on a little bit too long, I do apologise. If you've been following me, if you've been following me for a while now, you know that I get a little bit excited around fragrances. I'm like a kid in a candy store, even with my own fragrances, and I start getting a few of them out, I get excited. It's just how it goes. It's my passion for the game. Right, ladies and gentlemen, which ones do you own out of these seven? Which ones have you tried? Which ones are you interested in? Drop a comment down below. I will always get back to you. Remember, smelling good's always a pleasure and never a chore. I appreciate everybody's support, and I mean everybody's support, and I will see you lot on the next one. Cheers.